Chandu, the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We present for your enjoyment, Chandu, the magician. Before our drama starts, we would like to ask you a question. Had you noticed, perhaps, how difficult it was to buy White King in the years we've just passed through? Other kinds of soaps on grocer shelves, often in abundance, but seemingly so little White King. Well, White King is made largely from precious nut and vegetable oils. These were scarce. We could not begin to fill demand for our soap, and we would not sacrifice quality. The ladies who are our customers are intelligent people. And so when a package of White King did appear on a grocer's shelf, it was quickly bought and taken home and treasured, as perhaps no other soap has ever been. Maybe you haven't tried this different kind of soap. It will do so much of your work for you that you too will say, I love White King soap. Frank Chandler has come into possession of a snapshot of Robert Regent, his sister's husband believed to have drowned on a torpedoed ship nine years ago. But the picture shows a group of men landing in a lifeboat on an unrecognizable beach. In their meeting place in the pyramid in Egypt, Chandler, Dorothy, and Naji piece together the few facts they have learned and agree that Regent must be a prisoner in the hands of the malignant rock sword. A moment later, Bob and Betty call to them in great excitement from the corridor outside. But when the others run out, they find that what appears to be an ornamental design on the wall is a door. Bob and Betty have opened it somehow, and it is closed behind them, locking them in. Chandu, the magician. Well, open it, Frank. The children will suffocate in there. Not him. Isn't there someone in Cairo who knows these old burial rooms? An archaeologist? I know of no one. I have never heard of a door like this one. But we can't just stand here and do nothing. Mom, there is no danger that Bob and Betty will die in that room, Dorothy. Unless from fright, the poor little one. No, Dorothy. All these rooms have air shafts. You're not just saying that. No, no. Every burial room that's ever been discovered in the pyramids has one. Even the tunnel under the Sphinx, don't you remember? I didn't even think of that. But if we can't get the door open, Frank, maybe they could open it from inside. Well, the door may not be as thick as the walls. If they can make them hear me, they can tell me how they got it open in the first place. Bob! Bob! Betty! Can you hear us? Betty! Not a sound from them. Do you suppose someone else could be in there? In a room that hasn't been opened for a couple thousand years? Come now, Doc. It is silly, isn't it? Well, you can't hear them because the wall's too thick. Well, I don't know why I immediately jumped to the conclusion that Bob and Betty wouldn't get out of their lives. They were always into something at home. I coped with it somehow. You have had great reason to be afraid since you have come to Egypt, Dorothy. I believe most women would have sailed for America before this. Without finding my husband? I told you you underestimated her, Nutty. Now, let's see. What are you doing? Looking for a spring or a button or something. It opens the door. It must have touched it by accident. It certainly didn't swing open by itself. If there is one, uh, it is concealed in the paint design of the wall. And not too high above the floor. Well, you don't know that, Frank. Bob's almost six feet tall. Yes, but he wouldn't be reaching way up over his head to find a spring he didn't know was there, Doc. I'm going to call them again. Bob! Betty! Oh, it is useless, Dorothy. These walls are very thick. They were built for the ages. Let's stand back here and look at it. You think we might see a place in the design where the spring hidden? Yes. Yeah. Whoever went to all the trouble to install the mechanism. But... Wait a minute. Well, do you see it? Not yet, but... You see, it's just the usual border of conventional figures around the doorway. But it wasn't meant to look real. What? See how that shadow's painted down the side to give the effect of depth? 
as if it were an actual stone casing. But why should it have been real, as you say, Chandu? The doors of burial rooms were sealed, never to be opened again. Oh, but, Naji, we know this one opened. Hmm. Birds, animals, very early hieroglyphics. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe the writing itself is the key to it. Can you read it, either of you? All the inscriptions have been deciphered long ago, Dorothy. Well, anyway, the builders wouldn't have left an obvious key. No one ever went into a burial room after it was sealed, except tomb rubbers. No, no, never. Until the foreign digging parties came to search for buried kings. Once I entered such a tomb with a group of these men, and there in the dust, on the floor inside the doorway, was the print of a naked foot. The footprint of the slave who closed the entrance 40 centuries ago. Oh, Frank, for goodness sake. I've got it. What is it? Where? I mean, this is what must have happened. Long after this room was sealed up, someone, probably a thief, needing a safe hiding place, he knew of the room and he managed to build this door and conceal the mechanism. How could a thief have time for all that? Bringing in material and painting and... You do not know, Dorothy. He need not have been a slave or a poor beggar dodging here and there in the streets of Cairo. He could have been the brother of a king. With slaves of his own to do the work. He could dispose of them afterward and no one would ever know. Oh, do not be so upset, Dorothy. It was often done, as Chandu said. No, he wouldn't mar the design around the false doorway. He'd know he could never match the coloring. Someone would find out what he'd done. So... So where would he put the gadget that opens the door? Right, do you see it? Somewhere in plain sight. Too high. We reached accidentally. I was wrong. It must be up high, Dorothy. Bob and Betty were probably poking all around the place trying to... Is that it? Somewhere along here. Right here. The whole stone door is movable. Oh, oh look. <clears throat> Come on in, both of you. Hurry, before it closes. Oh, but hold it open. We'll be shut in here, too. The man who built it had to get out, Don. Oh, such darkness. Well, I have my letter. And stand still until we see where we are. Bob! Betty! Where are you? Yes, I told you, Miss Gideon. We're right here, Mom. Wait a minute, we'll bring you a light. Just wait till you see what we found. Well, how can they bring us a light? Well, they certainly have one. Can you see it? Through the doorway. There's an inner room over there. Oh, Bob, why didn't you wait for us after you called us? We might never have found the way in. Oh, we didn't think, Mom. Well, if we hadn't seen Betty's handkerchief caught the corner of the door, we'd never have known where you were. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. But we're all right, except we'll be black and blue in a few places where we bumped into things. Isn't this positively prehistoric? You don't know how true that is, Betty. Now, let me have one of those candles, will you, Bob? Where did you find candles? In the next room. You know there are three rooms in this thing. Some old king had a regular apartment to be buried in. It was often done in this way, Bob. The number three is a mystic number. Oh. Well, what's all this stuff in here anyway? A burial furniture, Bob. There was probably a lot more of it once. And caskets of jewels. We haven't seen any jewels, Najee. We haven't looked. Don't bother. Tomb robbers probably got them centuries ago. Robbers. And here we felt like Columbus. Well... Come on, let us show you the other room. Oh, yes, please do. There are enough candles in here to light it all up. There sure are. Here you are, Mom. And here's one for you, Naji. Oh, thank you, Bessie. Hold up your candles and look around. Birds and animals and everything painted all over everywhere. It feels like you're in a cage. And uh, don't you notice anything? This was the burial room of a child, the son of a king. Was it, Naji? How do you know? I know the customs of ancient Egypt well. Ancient Egypt? I don't wonder you're surprised, Doctor. Oh, I knew you'd see it. Who do you think has been in here? Someone who wasn't interested in ancient history. Modern chairs, tables, water jar. Your robbers are today, not centuries ago. Why don't you ask us? What? Don't tell me you saw them. Oh, now, Bob, you spoiled it all. Why couldn't you do it the way we said we would? Oh, you and your build-up. What are you talking about? Oh, well, Betty thought it would be a red-hot idea to make you all ask all kinds of questions and then finally say, Oh, by the way, we saw Roxor. But we did, Uncle Frank. We really did. Where? 
Where is he? Are you sure? Well, wait till I tell you. When the door shut behind us, well, well, I thought, brother, what now? And so did I. I was petrified. We just stood there in the dark without saying a word. And then we saw a dim light over this way, and we noticed all the furniture piled up between us and the light. And then Betty grabbed my arm. And I just barely whispered to him, there's somebody in there. Betty. Well, well, we sneaked over past all the stuff, and and we're sure lucky. I was afraid it would fall down with a crash and give us away. And then we tiptoed up to that doorway over there, and Bob poked his head around it. For goodness sake. And Roxo was inside. The old boy himself, just as we saw him in the crystal ball. Same white, ugly face, same little eyes like a snake. We know what he looks like, Bob. Did he see you? Oh, yes. Uncle Frank, you should have seen him. Sitting there right next to the... uh, What do you call that case they have a mummy in? Sarcophagus. Yeah. Get on with it, Bob. Oh, I am, Uncle Frank. He had a lot of chemistry things. You know, retorts and test tubes and stuff. Right on the top of the sarcophagus. Chemistry. And he had something in a bottle that gave out a kind of a greenish light. That's what we'd seen. The chemistry of the evil one. Did he see you? Well, he wouldn't have, I guess. Only, only I got so mad when I thought he must have, have given that storyteller Dad's ring and that maybe he knew where Dad is. I, well, I just whipped right in there and... And when Roxar saw Bob, he looked as if he'd burst. And then before you could say boo, he snatched up that green bottle and... Yeah, and he stepped behind a big gold chair that looked like a king's throne and, and boom, it was all dark. If we hadn't found these candles, we'd really have been scared. Oh, you foolish children. You have been protected from death. Give me another candle, somebody. Well, here, take mine. Are you going in there? Of course I am. Wait here. Oh, be careful. Uncle Frank, can't I give you a hand? Oh, Bob, please, stay here. You can all come in here now if you like. It's all right. I I wonder if there's a mummy in that sarcophagus. I hope not. How could Rockstar have found a way to this place? I'm only glad we know he has. But there's nothing here. Yes, there is. Well, what, Uncle Frank? Something white down behind the sarcophagus. Oh. A piece of paper. And just a scrap torn off of... Dorothy, look. What, Frank? Look here. It says, it could be done if we could obtain the help of Regent. <laughs> Before we bring to a close our drama this evening, may I say something to the ladies on the subject of hands? There is an extra special quality in White King soap that is extra specially kind to hands. And I'll tell you what it is. If you use the kind of soap that needs hot, hot water to make it work, your hands are likely to be rough and red no matter what kind of soap it is, or what claims are made for it, or what it contains. But listen, White King, with its nut and vegetable oils, doesn't need hot water. In washing machine or dishpan, for heavy clothes or filmy, fragile things, White King washes the dirt away in water that's just about body temperature. Ever hear of anything like that? No wonder millions and millions of ladies say... I love White King soap. That's what you'll say, too. Chandu the Magician is based on the original radio drama created by Harry A. Earnshaw. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.